The city of Kelowna needs to reduce the amount of water applied to our urban landscapes by at least 30% as compared to year 2007 levels. We can do this during new construction or as we retrofit existing landscapes. To some people, a 30% reduction in landscape watering sounds like brown lawns and dying plants. But that's not necessary to meet the target. This video shows a few of the many ways to meet a 30% reduction in water use and have a beautifully designed landscape. Lawn areas are one of the biggest users of water. Having our yards be 100% irrigated green lawn won't meet the target. The first step in a 30% reduction is using a low water landscape treatment rather than mowing lawn for at least one quarter to one half of the site area. There's many beautiful and functional alternatives to lawn like ground covers, shrub plantings, ornamental grasses. Although planted areas of some type should be encouraged, they can also be complemented with non-watered areas. Surfaces like cobble or a whole variety of stone and aggregate materials, shells or bark and organic mulches. We don't want people to just concrete their yards. That wouldn't be aesthetic and it would be too hot and it would actually create watershed problems downstream because of too much runoff. We want landscape areas where water is allowed to soak into the ground underneath. There are also many new pervious paving materials. These are different than interlocking brick. They have wider cracks and small aggregate instead of sand bedding between the cracks. Pervious pavers like this are designed to be functional like pavement for patios or driveways and yet the water quickly soaks into the soil below. In environmental performance, pervious pavement is equivalent to a landscape area. Some developments also have stands of existing trees or vegetation that can be left and that can be worked into the landscape scheme. As long as their roots are left undisturbed, these typically don't need any watering at all. Using these techniques, we suggest designing 15 to 30 percent of the site landscape area to not require watering at all. In this patio home example, Artful use is made of stone. It creates a dry stream and other attractive unwatered areas. Although this development does have some mowing lawn, it also uses large areas of low water use plantings. The planting design is well thought through with different plants for sunny areas and shady areas. And the site has different irrigation zones for each of these different planting and watering needs. A problem that is much too common in the Okanagan hillsides is the lack of sufficient growing medium. If there's only a thin soil over blasted rock, there's no reasonable amount of water that will keep this lawn green. The depth and quality of growing medium needs to follow good horticultural practice. Landscape contractors should be required to follow the BC landscape standard which sets out minimum standards to ensure a maintainable landscape. Any lawn requires much more water than most shrub areas. This industrial development follows good practice by organizing landscape into hydrozones. That's areas of high, medium, low, or no water need. The design of this irrigation system matches the landscape hydrozones. Lawn sprays, to do the lawn which needs a lot of water are separate from shrub sprays which will need less water. When spray heads are used they need to be arranged to have water from one head touch the next sprinkler. This is called head to head coverage. Stretching the spacing wider than head to head creates a dry spot in the middle. All spray heads and rotor heads are only about 70 percent efficient and getting water to the plants that need it. A lot of the water uh, is lost to evaporation in the air. Drip systems, on the other hand, 
like this inline drip supply to a hedge, are more than 90% efficient at getting water to the roots where it's needed. The more drip systems that can be used instead of spray heads or rotors, the more the water savings. Since each landscape hydrozone has a different need for water, it's critical to provide a separate irrigation control zone for each hydrozone. Irrigation control technology is also improving fast. You should look for and use one of the new smart controllers. These adjust their time clock automatically to match the weather or the soil moisture conditions. The water conservation ideas we've outlined for developments apply just as well to school or to park sites. Although playing fields, sports fields, justify a higher water use because of their high function, the verge areas around the fields could have, for instance, more pervious paving or more naturalized unwatered areas to reduce their water need. This park in Kelowna is well done. It has a good mix of watered lawn and shrub area balanced by unwatered play mulch and an unwatered natural area. Here is another park site that includes areas of pervious paving as a part of the overall park design. Water conservation and thinking about it needs to start right at the time of land planning and subdivision. Not all our street boulevards and medians have to be mown and irrigated grass. Where there are rural areas or steep slopes behind the sidewalk rather than an urban setting, a meadow of grass or wildflowers would need some watering but much less so than mowing lawn. Even grass boulevards can be intermixed with areas of stone mulch. This street is a good example. In this case the grass boulevard by the street is about the same width as the road's hedge area behind the sidewalk. Both of these are in the street right-of-way and could be done at the time of subdivision. The roses will need much less water than the lawn and they're on a different irrigation zone. The same street on the other side has a section where there's a naturalized area rather than roses and this will also take a lot less water. In fact, these native plants should need no water once they're established a year or two after planting. In highly urban situations, boulevard plantings can be quite innovative. These designs provide paving for access at parked cars, but they treat the remainder of the boulevard in a variety of plantings. These would need much less water than a grass boulevard. In this median example, a very low water use plant is waving in the wind. It's quite beautiful. These treatments add a lot of value to this urban neighborhood. So I think we've demonstrated that achieving a 30% reduction in landscape water use isn't that difficult. It's just very creative.